Hey everyone, Stuart here, hope you're well. I'm back in the woods again, which can only mean one thing, another talking video. This time, I'm gonna go over some ideas of how to improve as a guitar player. And some of these will translate over to other instruments as well. So if you're not a guitar player, keep on watching as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave any comments you have in the box below. I love the dialogue with you guys and I learn from all your comments as well. When you've watched this video, get over to fingerstylefocus.com. It's my nutrition site. Get your 24 hour free access period and get learning some stuff. Normally, when people make these sorts of videos, they start off with some blazing display of technique and then a long monologue about how they got so good. And that's normally involving something like they played 15 hours a day or they had a guitar made out of a magic tree. None of that is gonna work for you. We all come from different places. Our stories are all different. I started playing 30 years ago. I'm an only child, so for me, the instrument became the focus of my life. You're gonna be somewhere else. You might have just picked up a guitar. You might have been playing for 50 years. So I'm gonna start off with a parallel on my first point. A couple of months ago, I took up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a complete beginner, and so I absolutely suck. Every week I go there and I get my face crushed on the mat by some guy who knows what he's doing. But that is a fantastic place to be because as a beginner, I have utter clarity. I can see exactly what I need to do. I can see how I need to do it. And I understand that it's gonna take time. The longer you do something, the further away you get from that beginner's frame of mind and the more everything starts to blur. Six months, two years, five years, 30, 50 years, everything blurs. All of a sudden, you can do things, but there are little things that prevent you from achieving what you want to achieve. And that's because you might have incorrect foundations in place. A very important thing is to constantly go back to that beginner's frame of mind and try and remember what it was like when you started off, try and remember the challenges and how you overcame them, but also thinking about all the technical aspects as well. I play the major scale every day. I play it in all 12 keys, I play it in different positions, and then I try and find new melodies within it. Now the major scale or the minor pentatonic scale, these are basics, these are foundational points, but by going back to them, I can keep refining things I do from the way I hear music to the way I actually execute the things I wanna play. So always try and maintain that beginner's sense of clarity. Ask yourself what improvement actually means to you because it means different things to different people. It's a different thing for an amateur than it is for, for a professional. Are you improving because you want to know more repertoire and you want to be able to play it? Do you want to be able to play faster? Do you want to improve so you can play with that drummer who's really good? There are all these different things um, for different people. Improvement can be a very subjective term. Really think about what it means to you before you just sit down and go, yeah, I need to improve, you know? Think, what does improvement actually mean to me? Another one is to come to terms with the mountain. And that means just coming to terms with the scale of what you're trying to achieve. Guitar playing is a lifetime's pursuit and you know, you can't climb a mountain immediately, but every mountain has a summit. And you have to look at your musicianship the same way and think, everything is based on short-term and long-term goals. I'm not a mountaineer, I'm probably never gonna be a mountaineer, but I should imagine that when a mountaineer gets to the summit, they don't look at the top and go, well, we've got to get up there. They're probably breaking it down into different parts they're gonna climb. I guess they're the base stages, and then they'll move up from there. You have to view development the same way. It's all gonna be done in stages. And then you'll look back and suddenly realize you made giant leaps, but in the short term, it won't feel like that. Don't be afraid of the summit. Just come to terms with it, work towards it. As long as you're going up, then you're gonna be all right. And the coming down, well, that's something that probably comes later on. Maybe we never come down from our guitar mountain. Maybe it's a constant upward journey, but keep enjoying it and reconcile that summit with yourself. This next one is absolutely huge and is probably gonna sound like a 40 something bloke having a rant, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Choose your authorities carefully. In this day and age, anybody with a camera and an idea can present themselves as being an expert. And if you don't know me, you're probably watching this video going, well, here's another one now. 
just go to my website, all my credentials are there. But a lot of people on YouTube are presenting themselves as authorities without any real experience. And they're doing this for self-promotion. They're doing this because they want to be perceived as something they're not necessarily. It's very easy to, it's very easy to buy into that. As I say, you see somebody making some sort of presentation or some sort of film and you automatically think, well, they must be an authority on it. Choose the authorities very carefully. I normally, um, if I'm watching either a musician or someone in, in, in anything, I try and figure out what their credentials are and then I try and figure out what other people are saying about them as well. I don't know a thing about fishing, but if I wanted to take up fishing, I'd probably try and figure out who the professionals were, not who the amateurs were who were vying for my time in order to improve their view counts. Don't necessarily go for the video with the most amount of views because high metrics just attract people. Choose authorities very, very carefully and think, am I going to learn the right thing from this person or are they going to teach me the wrong way? It's easy for someone to get your attention and then give you some bad advice, teach you some bad technique and before you know it, you've watched 30 videos and take on board all their bad habits, either because they were charismatic or they had loads of views. Be very, very careful. Research the people who you're watching and listening to. One of the real trends at the moment is for YouTube musicians to uh, present videos where they can't play something and then they go on a journey and at the end of it they can play it or they can play it better than they did. It's good in some ways, it's very admirable, but in other ways it's done to hook you in. They're trying to create a sense of empathy so you go, oh, I can see they've worked hard. I think always look for the honesty in the people that you're watching. If they're genuinely taking on that taking on that journey of um, I can't play this but I will be able to great but I just feel more and more when I see these videos it is that promotional tool wrapped up in sympathy and empathy and then at the end of it wow they can play it it's probably a video that's been reverse engineered um, they can play it to begin with and then they take you on the journey about how they learn to play it it's meant to, I guess, mirror your journey, but I don't always think it's honest. So just be careful of that kind of thing. And again, make sure that the people you're watching have your best interests in hearts and not their high viewer metrics and sponsorship figures. Transcribe, okay? Um, people object, they say, oh, it's too hard, it's too fast, okay? Buy a piece of software called Transcribe. It's about 30 pounds, $30. And it will let you slow down the music, loop it, Play it back, play it forward, change the, change the key if you want. Transcribing is amazing because all of a sudden you're taking on board someone else's ideas and thought processes. You're seeing how they did it and you might have to think, well, you know, why did they do that? How, you know, what technique are they using? At first it could be hard, no doubts about it, but it's like a habit. The more you do it, the easier it's going to become. In the old days, we used uh, tapes. There's no sort of slowdown software. It's literally rewind, play, rewind, play. Even before that, people used vinyl. Although I think with vinyl, they used to stick a finger onto the, um, onto the record to slow it down a bit. These days, it's so much easier. There's no excuse for it. So get that piece of software or a similar piece of software. Start transcribing as much as you can. And then make sure you can play what you've transcribed. Another one that will help massively is to get out of the comfort zone. As humans, we love habit and repetition because in evolutionary terms, those are the things that kept us safe and kept us out of danger. But guitar playing is very unlikely to cause you harm. So to get out of the rut, try a style you've never tried before. If you've never played country, play country. If you've never finger picked, give it a go. Another thing to go even further is to try a different instrument. Think about it, as a guitar player, or a bassist or whatever, you've already overcome the challenge of playing something with frets. You can then go to things like mandolins, mandolas, banjos, bazookis, all these things are the same principle as instruments you've already learned. The great thing is, when you've learned a new instrument, you have to learn new tunings, you have to learn new approaches, which you can then actually end up taking back onto guitar. So learning a new instrument is one of the best ways that you can improve and one of the best ways that will get you out of the rut. Have a vision. You know what? Want to be good at this. Want to improve. Want to be good. As I said, 
I absolutely suck at jiu-jitsu, but I want to improve. I go back each week, and when things don't go to plan, I look at it and go, you know what? I'm gonna practice this, and I am gonna get better at it. But you have to be determined to improve. Improvement is not just gonna happen. You have to put things in and have that vision where you say to yourself, I want to do this. I actually, actually do want to improve. Commitment is important. Um, You've got to commit to want to improve, and commitment is going to generally involve several different things. It's going to involve a time commitment, and it's going to involve a money commitment. If you aren't committed, then you're probably not going to move forward, because you'll just have this sense of a constant battle all the time. It will become something that you're trying to fight against yourself to achieve. If you make a commitment to it, then you are going to move forward. I can guarantee it. Now, the objections people have are time commitments and money commitments. Time commitments. People say, I haven't got the time to practice guitar. I've heard this one so many times over the years, it's not funny. I haven't got the time. I work, I've got a family. Guitar players have those things as well. Professional guitar players have those things and yet they're still improving. So the time commitment needs to be overcome by saying first off, well you know what? There are ways to overcome a perceived lack of time. Everyone has 24 hours in a day. Ways to overcome a perceived lack of time. Get up an hour earlier, make that guitar playing time. Work later in the evening with your guitar, make that guitar playing time. Take the guitar to work, and instead of going out for lunch, play guitar for 30 minutes. You'll feel better than you will, probably after eating a big lunch you didn't need. I used to take my guitar to school when I was a kid. I took it so much that the teachers told me off and tried to stop me doing it. So I actually had to hide it. I'd take it to school and hide it somewhere, and then in lunch break I'd go and play because I was absolutely obsessed with it. But I'd made that time commitment. Now, coming back to what I said at the start, some people will try and roast you about this. They'll say, oh, you're not spending enough time with the instrument. I played 17 hours a day, I played 25 hours a day. That's not absolutely necessary. What's really important with a time commitment is that your time is focused and you know what you're trying to achieve. You can play for 12 minutes and achieve some incredible things, or you can noodle around for 12 minutes, achieve nothing, and then go, well, I haven't got time. So that's a big thing. The money commitment, again, I hear this one a lot, I can't afford it. Well, you know what? Price is never an objection. Price is just something that you're creating yourself. Next time you're standing in line to pay four pounds or whatever for a cup of coffee, think to yourself, you know what? I could make this coffee at home for free and not spend this four pounds, but I have no objections paying for it now. You should approach music the same way. Get rid of that objection. Get rid of that objection and think about investing some time and money in your music. Money. Buy a music book, 10, 15 pounds, there's a couple of coffees, forget about it. Buy a music book that will give you some long-term development. Have a lesson with somebody. Go and join a website where you can learn. Now I know I'd say that, but I'm telling you now, join something which is gonna keep you fo focused, keep you directed towards your goals. Get rid of those time and money objections. They're just holding you back. They're holding you back in everything in life. Forget McDonald's, forget Costa Coffee, make your lunch, make your own coffee, channel that money into something that's going to be better for you long term not short term another point with the um, financial commitment is sometimes that can be an amazing way to commit and improve when I did um, my first jiu-jitsu class at the end of it I discovered I had to buy what's called a gi um, the suit that you wear when you're doing it and it was really expensive but I did it and it keeps me going back, if not least, because I want to get the value out of the damn thing. Every time I go, I realize that it's cost me a little bit less to own and use that suit. So the same thing can sometimes apply with guitar playing. It could be as simple as buying a new pedal, taking lessons and rolling on a weekend, but sometimes those kind of commitments are really gonna help you. They kind of create something that might not already be there. Don't go mad, you know, don't go, well, um, if I'm going to play blues, I'm going to have to buy a 59 Les Paul. I'm not sanctioning this kind of behavior, but sometimes putting the money in will help you commit and then will keep you moving towards improvement. Sometimes you might want to look at it and say, how big a commitment can I feasibly make? How big a commitment do I want to make? But you've got to have some sort of commitment to it. Now, I'm just going to digress for a minute. 
because I just heard a train go by. Hear music in everything. When you're out and about, if you hear the sound of something, try and think what interval have I just heard, okay? And then try and sing it back, see if you can pitch it. It's an amazing way of practicing and improving ever so subtly without even having an instrument in your hands. Another thing, if you're out and about without a guitar, visualize a fingerboard in your neck. Try and play things without even playing them. When you get back to the instrument, everything will become just that slight bit easier. One thing that's amazing these days is the amount of guitar holidays and guitar breaks. Um, many of you know that I do these myself. I do guitar weekends, I do guitar weeks. This is incredible for several reasons. Firstly, you're gonna get some compressed learning. So you're gonna learn a great deal in the space of either a weekend or a week, which might then keep you going for the following six months. Secondly, you've made a commitment to something, you've got rid of all the other distractions that may get in the way of your playing normally, so you can really focus for a fixed period of time. And thirdly, you'll be around like-minded people, and that is one of the best ways to improve. Um, one person who I really like, who came to one of my guitar workshops said, I like these guitar weekends because they make me feel normal. I'm around like-minded people. And he's totally right. It's that period of life where you can suddenly say, we're all guitar players, we're mad about playing guitar or whatever instrument, this is our passion in life. Most other people don't understand us, but we're all together for this period of time and we can totally be who we are. It comes down to the time and money commitment again, but get on a guitar weekend and I guarantee you will leave enthused and with a further sense of improvement. And finally, there's every chance that you will have learned something from other people who are there, not just the people who's teaching you. Getting feedback is an absolutely critical thing for improvement. When you become professional, you will get feedback, I guarantee it. Sometimes you have to ignore that feedback because it's coming from the wrong reasons, either jealousy or people aren't into what you're doing. But your feedback is initially gonna come from family and friends, and this will make you feel great. However, longer term, moving forward, this isn't the feedback you want because family and friends aren't really gonna be honest with you. They're gonna be nice. You um, see this all the time on television. Check out these programs, these talent shows. The judges absolutely roast the people who haven't done very well. They immediately go backstage and the family roast the judges and say, how good their kids or whatever are. It's the wrong kind of feedback, unfortunately, because it's not gonna help you improve. It's gonna slow you down. If people say you're great and you're not, well, you know, that's it, you stopped. So try and get objective feedback. A couple of ways to do this. Go to an open mic night with people you haven't met before, play and see what happens. You'll instantly find out if you're improving or not. Another very good way of getting some feedback is to enroll on a guitar exam. So make yourself have a deadline, this comes back to that commitment issue, and make yourself work towards something. The person who examines you will not know you, they won't feel anything either way about you, they will just give you some completely impartial advice. And if you've got the grade, great. If you haven't, then you know you need to improve. I'll tell you an irony. I've written a lot of pieces that get used in guitar players' exams over the years, and I've never taken any guitar exams. I feel quite bad about that. Um, not bad enough to not do it, but um, if you're doing one of my exams, I do apologize, and uh, if somebody does give you uh, not quite the mark you're looking for, well, you can blame me and say that I've never done them myself. <laughs> Learn to take criticism. Be careful with criticism. People might have an ulterior motive with it, but try and take criticism from strangers because they're gonna have no agenda. If they don't know you and you're getting a sense they haven't got an agenda, then you can learn some incredible things from other people just from what they say about what you're doing. I said earlier, family and friends generally um, won't criticize the way that you need to be criticized. So learn to take criticism as well. Criticism is an opportunity to improve as long as it's balanced and coming from the right source. Figure out when you practice and learn best. This is gonna be really different for everybody. You might be someone that likes to get up at six in the morning and get playing guitar for an hour before you go anywhere. Or for you, it might get to 11 o'clock at night. The world is still and quiet. 
you collect your thoughts and you start playing. But figure out when it is that you seem to connect with the instrument and when it feels right to you. I said earlier, you know, you might find that you like taking, taking it to work and playing for 30, 30 minutes or an hour during your lunch break. Perfect. Don't let other people tell you when you should practice. You will know when the time is right and then try and make that a habit. Again, it comes back to the time commitment. If you know each day you pick up a guitar at seven in the morning for half an hour or 11 at night or five in the afternoon, that's gonna help you improve. It's a tiny measure, but it will get you playing and moving forward without even having to think about it too much. A really good one is record keeping and planning. I've spoken in other videos about the importance of the notebook, but it's huge. Make sure that you're planning what you want to do and then keeping records of it, both literally what it was you did and then also how it went. Is there a way you could improve it? Is there something that you need to change next time? Or maybe it was the wrong thing you're working on. But a great thing about writing is basically you're keeping a narrative to yourself. It's that thing which will help with commitment because you're constantly telling yourself where you need to go, how you're going to get there, but also think about why. Why are you doing the particular thing you're doing? It's different for everybody. For some people, improvement is based around speed. For some people, it's knowledge. For some people, it's more repertoire. For some people, it's going to be purely technique. It could be phrasing. You know, you can't quite get that bend right. So understanding what you're doing is really going to come from record keeping and planning where you're constantly saying, these are the things I'm working on and I'm not going to move forward until I've got these things correct. The great thing about the notebook, the great thing about the record keeping and planning is that you probably won't overwhelm yourself. If the list starts getting too big, you're going to pretty quickly look at it and go, ah, okay, I probably can't achieve all this at the moment. If you're not writing it down, all that stuff's going to be just in your head all the time and pretty quickly you will become overwhelmed. So put it in a list, you can visually see it, and when it's getting too much, you're gonna really edit that list and focus on what you need to really focus on. Record yourself as often as you can. It's ridiculously easy these days. You can either go all out and build a home studio or record yourself on the iPhone. Play it back, but play it back and watch and listen objectively. Ask yourself what things I need to improve on. These can be tangible elements like timing, tuning, phrasing, or they can be more musical-based ideas in terms of how you interpret things, how you, how you execute things. But recording yourself is very, very important, and it's critical that you watch it objectively. And also reward yourself. Look at what you're doing well. Look at how you have improved in those things that you're working towards. Surround yourself with people who are better than you. You're gonna learn from what they're doing. And the great thing about being around people who are better than you is that they will often want to help you as well because you'll remind them of a stage they are at some time ago. Now, one thing to remember here is avoid what I'd call gladiators. And a gladiator in music is a person that basically just wants to use you as a pounding board. They want to play everything that you can't play to just kind of make themselves feel better. Avoid those people. You'll quickly get a sense of who they are. And whenever you come across them, just think, okay, this is a gladiator. Get back to working with people who are better than you, but who genuinely actually want to help you. Play with a pianist and a drummer. This will do incredible things and help you improve very quickly. The drummer is gonna make you really focus on your sense of time and feel. The piano player can make you think about harmony and space. Many of us guitar players um, start off by playing alone for a long time in the bedroom and then along with records, which never gets you thinking about space because if you play on your own, if you're not playing, you're not playing and you sit there and nothing's happening. Play with other musicians, all of a sudden you'll realize the value of not playing. Play with a drummer and they're gonna give you a sense of space you have to work against. Play with a piano and pretty quickly you're gonna find if things are cluttered if you're playing the wrong ideas harmonically, or if you're just playing too much. I remember going to a jazz jam session about 25 years ago, maybe, maybe a bit less, and um, I remember the bass player leaned over to me and just said, um, you need to sit out. I mean, those words were crushing, but I came to realize what he meant. I was playing too much it needed space and I wasn't giving it space. One caveat, make sure you play 
with a good drummer and pianist if you can. If you play with a bad drummer, they can really start destroying your sense of time, feel and groove. You might take on board their bad habits and that can be very hard to shake. So always try and find the best possible people to play with. Avoid negativity and even more, avoid verbalising it. Two phrases you'll hear, I'm giving up, I'm not good enough. As soon as you put things like that into words, you've entered an internal dialogue with yourself, which will just go into this perpetual, cycling, vicious loop. Forget those kind of phrases, forget that negativity, remain positive, enjoy it, and keep yourself moving forward. Human beings don't like looking at bigger pictures. In our evolutionary days, we live day to day. You know, tomorrow you might get gored by a wildebeest. We're not gonna get gored by wildebeest, okay? Look in the lifetime picture. Look in 30, 40, 50 years time. Persist and think where you're gonna be. Teach somebody something. Within the space of 10 minutes, you could learn all the deficiencies and all the things you have to improve on. When I used to teach one-on-one, -on -one, I remember the first person that ever came to me for a lesson came in and uh, I said, what do you want to learn? And he went, I don't know. I said, what kind of music do you like? And he went, all of it really. And I said, well, is there anything you want? And he said, well, maybe some riffs. And I went through every riff I knew and most of them weren't what he wanted until we finally settled on one riff after about 15 minutes of me playing. It made me realize that people hear things differently, they want different things, and fundamentally, I needed more riffs. This plectrum costs 40 pounds, and I know immediately what you're thinking. You're thinking 40 pounds for a plectrum. Completely wrong. Comes back to the idea of the money commitment to what you're doing. Look at how much a violinist spends on their bow. They're not messing around. They know that connects them to the instrument. They know the importance of that. Plectrum should be the same for you. Now, I'm not saying you have to go and spend a lot of money on a plectrum, not at all. What you do have to do is look at macro elements of your playing and figure out if they're holding you back. If something's not working with your picking, you might have to do something as simple as changing the plectrum. Try a few more. Plectrums can be cheap. Go out and buy a dozen, work through them all, find the one that works, and then give the others away. But imagine if you're not looking at macro elements, you could be spending a fortune on seeing a teacher each week who takes you through exercises and you both sit there going, yeah, I just don't know, it's not coming together. It could be something as simple as this. I play these for several reasons. These, these for me have a justification. They feel great, they don't wear down. And I also know that having a 40 pound plectrum means that I'm probably not gonna lose it. This thing is virtually stuck to me and I've got three of these. So small elements can make huge changes. You have to recognize them. And again, always think about your commitment to improvement. Just one last thing, if you have the £40 Pletrum, I guarantee you will also buy the £5 Pletrum case. Creating deadlines can be very useful as well. Um, we normally associate deadlines with the professional world, you know, some sort of work deadline, a report that has to be submitted, or if you're a student, you've got an essay to submit. With guitar playing, there are plenty of deadlines you can set. Now, I'd go for actual tangible deadlines. You know, if you say, I want to be able to play this piece um, by next Thursday, it might not happen because there's no real reason for that deadline to stay in place. So tangible deadlines, a great one is to book a gig. If you book a gig, then you know you have to achieve by an actual date. And again, I've already talked about the exam situation. Book an exam, you know that you will have to be ready for an actual date. But setting deadlines is an amazing way to guarantee some, some sort of improvement. Never lose your dreams. Never lose that sense of why you started doing this in the first place. The guitar journey is long and it's never going to be over, you know. If you want to play arenas, it might be hard, maybe it'll happen, but keep that as a dream because that's one tiny thing that will keep you enthused and improving. No matter what it is you do, always keep in mind those guitar playing dreams. I've still got loads of my own. I've still got a long way to go with what I want to achieve and you should be the same. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that's helped and given you some ideas. Remember, I want your ideas too. I love the dialogue we have together. 
don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe. All those kind of things are going to really help. And when you finish this video, make sure you get over to fingerstylefocus.com. I want to carry on the dialogue over there and help you with your fingerstyle guitar playing. I'll see you next time.